Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. You got Stacy with me. Shalom, Mama. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the gathering of the elect. Okay. And whether it could occur on Passover. Mm-hmm. So in this video, what we're planning to do is look down through certain scriptures that show that Passover could be the big day that we're waiting on. This big day where this gathering is to take place. Right. We see in 2nd Ezra that it's going to take place during a feast day. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you want to go ahead and read one of those translations? Okay. The Common English Bible says, Rise, stand, and see the number of those sealed at the feast. This, of course, is what we read over in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, talking about the 144,000 and the multitude that no man can number. Right. Well, we see here in 2nd Esdras that that sealing that is to take place in Revelation chapter 7 is associated with one of the feast days. Mm -hmm. And in this video, we plan to show which one of the feast days. Of course, this is important looking in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, as it's talking about the gathering of the elect. Right. So this is what we're talking about. The, okay. uh, the elect, the bride of Christ, whom the Bible was written for. Um, this is kind of the biggest moment in the Bible is when these people are gathered together. Okay. Like I said, we see this in the book of Matthew. Would you go ahead and read verse 31 out of chapter 24? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now, if we wanted to get into more of the timing of this gathering, we would have to examine this sound of the trumpet, which we've done in other videos. In this one, we're not really focusing on the exact year, just the festival day, Passover itself. Right. Because when we come over and look in the book of Jeremiah, Chapter 38 in the Septuagint translation of the Bible, it says that we will be gathered at Passover. Okay. But notice that the King James Version doesn't say that. I see that. So what we're going to do is compare these two and try to figure out why this is. Okay. Who's right. All right. Well, let's read a little bit of this. If you would, go ahead and read uh, from the King James first. Verse 8 says, Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return thither. Very specific, huh? Right. It's talking about the woman and child and woman giving birth and the lame and the mm -hmm. blind. Would you read it from the Septuagint translation? Okay, this is verse 8 as well. Behold, I will bring them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of the Passover. And shall beget a great multitude, and they shall return hither. Now, notice the similarities, which Septuagint would have been of Greek, and of course, King James would have been English. But if we go back and look at the Hebrew, look at what we find as far as that text is concerned. Make any sense of that? No. <laughs> looks, looks like Greek to you? Yeah, it does. Well, looks like Hebrew to me. <laughs> <laughs> we, but what we can do is put it into Google's translator mm -hmm. and let it translate it for us. So we did a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean, they got some of the words right. Yeah, I think you could, you know, force yourself to think it's saying the same thing. Yeah. But the thing is, we're not focused on all of these words. Because when we look back, they got most of the words correct. They're they're in agreement with most of the words. In fact, if I were to draw lines through the words that are in agreement, we see that there are very few words that are in disagreement. Mm -hmm. We see how it's talking here the in the King James from the coast of the earth. Right. And then over here, it says from the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, looking at the interlinear Bible. We can see that Earth is concordance number 776. Okay. So what we can derive from that is that everything up until this point we're in agreement with. Okay. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. All of this up here was basically saying the same thing until and up until including the word Earth. Okay. 
So that's why you see I have it lined out on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then you see this word pass over here. Right. And then over here you see the word lane. Yes. Well, back in the interlinear Bible, we see that this is part of the problem because the word is being translated as lame, but we see that it is the word pisat. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. Well, not as big as you might think, because when we look at concordance, we see the definition of the word lame, but look at how it's spelled there. Those three letters. Mm hmm. Well, when we come back to Strong's number six, four, five, three, we say that it's pretty much the same word. Right. But that brings me to something that I learned today about the Hebrew language mm -hmm. that I found quite fascinating. Matter of fact, would you go ahead and read this? In ancient Hebrew, there was no space between words, no chapters and scrolls, nor vowels, nor punctuation of any kind. Okay, and so think about that. No punctuation, no vowels. In those spaces. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, the translators were offered. So when they got the verse, it would have looked like that. Right. Uh, and also it was written backwards. Right. No spaces, no mm -hmm. vowels, written backwards with no punctuation. And so they basically just had to go figure it out. Yeah, I would think that that would be hard to decipher, especially um, with no spaces. Well, look what else it says. One had to learn to correctly divide the word of God as they used to teach. It had to be parsed carefully to distinguish the actual intended meanings based on specific context, as well as the additional meanings of words and sentences overlapping others, all of which were potentially valid and some of which were very intentionally valid, even with the same very specific overlapping context. All non-Hebrew translations, therefore, lack some of the additional Hebrew. In other words, they both could be right. It was basically up to the translator on which word he would use. Would he translate the word as Passover or would he translate the word as lame? Right. So which one is correct? So we're looking here at the verse itself. And again, we're narrowing it down to the conflict. What is the difference? Mm -hmm. And we see, like I said, there's very little conflict. Mm -hmm. The Septuagint is simply saying that they're going to be gathered to the feast of the Passover, while the King James is saying is that they're going to be gathered with the blind and the lame. Right. But that's way different. Mm -hmm. Which one is right? So when we're looking here at all of these words, and like we said, we got up to the word earth here. And we were able to separate everything before it. And then, like we said, the, the last word or the word in conflict here is this uh, Strong's number 6455. But everything after that, we can reconcile. We can make sense of everything after that. Mm -hmm. That's talking about the multitude that no man can number. So what it boils down to is these three words that is the difference. These three words are being translated in these two different ways in the King James is being translated talking about blind and lame but in the Septuagint it was translated as the feast of Passover and like you said um, I guess both of them were right it just depended on the translator um, but yeah um, as far as what we learned from the Hebrew but when we look a little bit closer let's see what we find first of all this is coming out of the interlinear Bible over there at Bible Hub. But notice here that this word doesn't have a concordance number. Out of all of the words up here, it doesn't have one. And when you click on it, it just gives you nothing. Hmm. It's like it's not a real word. And if you click on the next word to see which is the next word, it gives you the very first word in there. Thing. So it's not even a, a real word or something that's going on with it here. Right. And then this word here is being translated as the blind, mm -hmm. which is Strong's number 5787. But when we click on it, we see that it could have the definition of blind for those particular three letters. Or it could be to make blind like we see in 5786. 
But when we look at 5785, it says a skin. Mm -hmm. And 5784 could be chafe. Well, like chafe skin. Or it could be exposed like a bare skin, like we see in Strong's number 5783. Or even rouse or awake. All of these words are choices that the translators could have used. Right. So, after a lot of prayer and meditating on it, and you know, one of the ideas that our father gave me was to use Google to mm -hmm. translate some of this. Okay. So, what we did is first went into Google and put in the text without any spaces, just like the translators would have gotten it. Mm -hmm. Now, immediately Google, after I pasted it in, immediately Google tried to sort it out and added their own spaces. Okay. Or read the difference in what came out. This is the one with no spaces. Okay. Behold, I will bring them from the land of the north and groups from the land of the south. Now, that's what I pasted. And like I said, it, Google immediately started adding spaces. Right. So look what it came up with after it tried to figure it out. I will come from the northern land and groups from the far end of the land in the spring of the Passover. And I will give birth to my children, Hadok the Great, and they will return here. So this is Google's actual first good attempt. It it's has a pretty a, good attempt. Yeah, it's getting closer, but it's getting closer to the Septuagint mm -hmm. translation. Right. And we're just putting in the Hebrew letters here. Mm -hmm. And Google just added a space here or there. But this is what it came up with. Okay. So then I start trying to narrow it down because, like I said, most of the verse is in agreement. We're only in, out of agreement in certain parts of it. So I recognize the word Passover there or Passat right there. Mm -hmm. And so look what happens when I deleted everything after that word. Okay. It starts talking about the spirit of Passover now. Hmm. Google has translated it to where... We're being gathered who he's coming for us in the spirit of Passover. of Passover. Like I said, all that was was deleting everything after right. that. Because like I said, it was in agreement. So then we said that we were in agreement with everything up until the word earth, right. which will be included right here. So we go in and we delete everything up until those words. Up until the three words that are in question here. And look how Google translates those three words. In his memory, Passover. So really, it's this word right here that's in question. Because this one is either going to be translated as lame. Right. Or it's going to be translated as Passover. Mm -hmm. But this one here is the one that included the word that wasn't in the concordance. Okay. And the word that could have been both blind and skin. Right. But when you put those two together, it comes out as in his memory. In fact, if you separate the two words, it looks like in his skin. But when you combine those two words, it's in his mind. Wow. So there's your answer. That's your mic drop moment. The translators, instead of telling us that he was coming back in spirit or in our mind mm -hmm. during Passover, they've come up with some other way of translating into lame. Into the blind and the lame. Into the blind and the lame. You're right. And then you go back and you look and you ask yourself, well, why would that even be included in here? Mm -hmm. Why is it all of a sudden the Bible? I'm trying to think of the word that you that you did the word for when you have to include, you know, be inclusive when you have to, you know, make sure, you know, everybody's represented. But with this multitude that no man can number, could you have imagined there being no children or right. no pregnant women right. or no lame people there? Right. So it doesn't make sense for it to read that way in the first place. But the scripture seems to point to where we will be gathered in spirit during the Feast of Passover. Yeah, once again, it seems to be supporting um, the spirit and truth that the Father talks about. So what I believe, and you guys could tell me what you think in the comment section, is that we are being gathered at the Feast of Passover. Yeah, it definitely seems to be supporting that. 
But I have a question. Why is it, do you think that those two words were chosen instead of the word Passover? Blind and lame? Yes. Well, they could have chosen any word that they want. And I mean, we would like to think that it was a mistake or we can get into the idea that maybe somebody's trying to hide the fact that Passover is so important that this is our ticket mm -hmm. to the kingdom of heaven is through Passover. And as much as I love the King James version of the Bible, we do have to understand that King James was a product of Constantine and what he had going on. And were they a little bit deceptive in hiding some of this stuff from us? I, I don't know. Um, I would hate to think such a thing because that would mean that our Bibles could be used against us in order right. to have us uh, not aware of what's supposed to be going on. There are those who I believe who don't want you to know that these promises exist or how to take advantage of them. And then even if you were to get past all of that, then you have to run into those who are trying to tell you different days and the wrong day to do them and the wrong way to do them. You know, a lot of people are trying to interfere with where it is that, you know, these people are headed. But at the end of the day, like we see in the book of Revelation, chapter seven, you know, they're going to be standing there on Mount Zion regardless, which, you know, kind of points to that spiritual side of this gathering um, that we were talking about earlier. But it all starts, at least I'll say that word, it starts on Passover. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's that's amazing that you were able to be, you know, go in and pull that out because, you know, if you didn't have the Septuagint, um, you might not have been able to pull that out of there. No, there's just no other. As far as I know, you wouldn't have had any other hint to make you go look. Right. In the first place, it's there. I mean, it's written right there. You see the word Passat written right there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's already there. But, you know, they've got it hidden amongst the other texts. They've taken these three words and jumbled them up so that we can't figure out what what our what we're being told what the promise is how to take advantage of this gathering how to be a part of this gathering so i guess yes yet another reason why the feast of passover is so important very important that's why he gave us two opportunities to do it so if you're watching this video late um just remember that we have second passover and then even then um we can be baptized and uh, go through that whole process again but we all want to be a part of this kingdom so let's continue to pray for one another look out for one another when we see something let's say something and give our father all praise and honor With that we want to say shalom shalom